In 2011 alone, there were around 14,612 murders in the US. Disturbingly, this averages out to 44 murders per day. Even though most of these crimes are eventually solved, a large amount remain unsolved mysteries. Sadly, murder cases can sometimes go unsolved, not only for decades, but even centuries. From serial killers who have never been found to people vanishing without a trace, we found some of the most puzzling mysteries you may find intriguing. The following are six most chilling unsolved crimes that still baffle us. Number six, the lead mask case. The bodies of Manuel Pereira de Cruz and Miguel Jose Viana were discovered by a Brazilian boy while flying a kite in 1966. Mysteriously, the men were dressed in their best suits and wore lead masks on their faces. The police were baffled as violence did not appear to be the cause of the deaths of the two men. More mysterious, a notebook was found with the bodies. However, it only raised more questions than answers. According to the notebook, the two men were to meet at the location, take capsules, put on the mask, and wait for an event. It was unclear as to what the two men were expecting to happen. However, analysis showed the lead mask were designed to protect against radiation poisoning. Bizarrely, one of the men also had a coupon to return the water bottle they were using, which indicates that the two men were not planning to commit suicide. Due to the body's decomposition, it is impossible to tell whether or not they were poisoned. Many questions still remain about this case. What were the two men waiting for? And more importantly, how and why did these men die? The case is still unsolved. Number five, the murder of Trevon Wynne. In April 2011, 24-year-old Trevon Wynne was visiting family in Brooklyn from Red Hill, South Carolina. Wynne was talking on his cell phone at around 7.45 p.m. on April the 23rd. While waiting outside his cousin's restaurant for a ride, a mysterious man walks past him to go into the restaurant. This unknown man walks back out into the street moments later and he then approaches Wynne, pulls a gun and fires two shots from point-blank range. Wynne was quickly rushed to the hospital after witnesses called 911. The father of one tragically succumbed to his injuries. Wynne's family believed Wynne was killed over a case of mistaken identity, as he did not live in the area and didn't know anyone in Brooklyn besides his family. Due to the random nature of the execution, it has made it an incredibly difficult crime to solve, and no one has ever been arrested for the murder. Number 4. The Tamam Shud Case a man was found dead on Summerton Beach in South Australia in 1948. The mysterious man was carrying no identification and there was no dental record match. Even though no trace of any poison was found, the autopsy suggested that it was poisoned. To make this case more complicated, an expert was brought in to examine the dead man four months after the body was found. It was then that he discovered a small pocket sewn into the waistband of the corpse's pants. Inside the pocket was a small piece of paper that read, Tamam Shud. This translates to, it is completed. And these are the last words of the poetry collection, the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. The scrap of paper has been torn from a copy of the book that was in a car near the beach. That book held the phone number of a nurse and a coded message. Police are still yet to solve. After interviewing the nurse, she told them she'd given the book to a man named Albert Boxall. Thinking the identified man was identified as Albert Boxall, they discovered Boxall was alive and well. Even more bizarrely, he still had the book the nurse had given him, with the last two words still in it, not torn out. Another lead eventually led detectives to a mysterious brown suitcase, which had been deposited at the Adelaide Railway Station's cloakroom months earlier. It was found that the label had been torn off of the suitcase to hide its origin. The tags bore the name T. Keen, but a search revealed no missing person with that name, and it was not found to be the name of the deceased man. More bizarrely, in the suitcase was a stencil kit that would have been used for stenciling cargo on merchant ships, a table knife that had been sawn down, airmail cars that indicated he was sending communications abroad, and a coat 
with stitch work identified as American in origin. These items indicated someone who had travelled, most likely on a merchant vessel, but shipping and immigration records revealed no leads. To this day, no explanation has ever been given. However, some believe the identified man was a spy. Number 3. The Taconic Parkway Crash In July of 2009 at 1.30pm, Diane Schuler and five adolescent passengers were in a head-on collision on the Taconic State Parkway at Mount Pleasant, New York because Diane was driving in the wrong direction. The crash killed Diane and four of her passengers as well as the three occupants of the SUV she'd crashed into. Diane's blood alcohol content was 0.19 and there were also traces of cannabis found in her blood. This may explain why Diane was driving in the wrong direction, exceeding 60 miles per hour. The timeline, however, makes this case complicated. Witnesses claim that Diane made multiple stops on her way and was sober at each one. However, around 1pm, her brother received a call from Diane's phone. Diane's nieces had made the call claiming that Diane was having trouble seeing and speaking and Diane had taken the fan and reiterated this. Her brother told her to stay put and left to go and pick her up. Half an hour later, the fatal crash happened. Detectives are still perplexed regarding the crash. Was Diane really intoxicated? If so, she would have had a short window of 30 minutes to get the distance she had covered. Plus, if she had trouble seeing and speaking, why didn't she wait for her brother? The only survivor of the crash remembers little. This case does not seem as simple as your topsy suggests. Number 2. The Jamison Family Mystery In October of 2009, the Jamison family from Eufaula, Oklahoma disappeared. A statewide manhunt went underway which eventually led to their truck being discovered. Their dog was found nearly dead from lack of food, along with their IDs, phones, wallets and, mysteriously, $32,000. It wasn't until 2013, five years later, when the family's bodies were found by two deer hunters, three miles away from where their truck had been. Skeletal remains of two adults and a child were found lying side by side, face down in the dirt, and anthropological and forensic pathological testing positively identified the remains as the Jamison family. However, they were so badly decomposed that a cause of death could not be identified. Many speculations are being thrown around from the involvement of a Mexican cartel, a meth deal gone bad, to even satanic cults. We may never know the answer. Number 1. The Disappearance of Dorothy Scott in 1980, a Californian woman by the name of Dorothy Scott started receiving calls at her work from a man who claimed to be in love with her. Disturbingly, the unknown man would alternate between expressing his love and threatening violence. Stating he was following her, he would provide details that would support his claim. On May the 28th, the situation reached a tipping point when Dorothy drove a co-worker to the emergency room. After her co-worker later left the hospital, she started seeing Dorothy's car veering erratically, speeding in the opposite direction. Sadly, her car was later found, burned, with no sign of Dorothy. Four years after Dorothy's disappearance, her family received calls from an unknown source claiming to be holding Dorothy. A local radio station also received the call from a man claiming to have killed her. The man provided details about her disappearance that only the police or perpetrator could have known. Dorothy's body was found in 1984 when the family received a final call asking, is Dorothy home? Her killer and the source of the phone calls were never found. The mystery remains a cold case.